Hello, everybody. Welcome back to RetroTech. Today, I've got a brand new episode of CRT Market Watch. Now, CRT Market Watch is going to focus on pro CRT monitor sales, this time between the middle of November, about November 14th, up to December 17th. So this is very uh, relative and new information. Um, all these sales do come from online sales, pretty much from eBay. And today I'm actually happy in this episode to expand our coverage of monitors out to just more than Sony PVMs and BVMs. So again, we're looking at pro monitor sales on eBay, and these are in North America only. So if you're outside of North America, uh, these aren't going to be sales you'll probably be able to see. However, if you search through the sales data for those dates and what is sold on eBay, you should be able to find many of the listings that I'm going to go through today. S the sales prices I'm talking about, they will include all costs for shipping. And then there will be many notes that I'll go over um, dealing with the conditions of the sold monitors. And uh, of course, we're going to go through then and highlight some specific sales that happened over the last 30 days. But there were just a ton of monitors sold almost 100. And I was able to find almost 130 pro video monitor sales. So let's just go ahead now and jump right into it. Please, though, if you're new to the channel and you haven't clicked subscribe, uh, please do that. And also like the video. If you do like the content, uh, this was a unanimously, unanimously well-liked video for the first series. So hopefully this video can do just as well. So one of the first monitors that we're going to be covering today, and it's one of the new monitors, is Ikigami CRT monitor sales. Now, I was surprised to find that over the last month we've had uh, six different sales for Ikigami CRT monitors, and these are all working CRT monitors. So just want to go through some of the highlights here. We've got this 1505RA, which is actually in the picture, and then um, another 15... 17 R. those are about 14 inch monitors that you're looking at all these monitors from what i could tell were just analog only so um they are still pretty pricey around the same prices as comparable uh maybe even a little bit higher than comparable pvms and then you've got a couple of 20 inch ones and those sales were um, what you'd expect for probably 20 inch ones you got one going for 425 dollars and then a nicer uh, 20 inch one going for $600. So that's just the overall sales that have happened in Ikigami. Remember that Ikigami is a very high quality CRT monitor that you can um, use for RGB and other things just as you do with any other pro video monitor. So we've also got quite a few sales for Panasonic CRT monitors. These again are all going to be pro level monitors with some to, uh, type of, well, these tubes are all shadow mask tubes, the Ikigami and then the Panasonics. But uh, just notice here that these are, the prices are all over the place, but most of them you can see from the sizes over here are going to be nine inches and then 13 inch monitors. So the nine inches are what you'd expect between 70 and a hundred dollars. And then those 13 inch monitors, now those are going to be comparable again to an earlier um, Sony PVM, like a 1344Q, those 1390Ys are, and because they, they're going to have all, or most of the um, adjustments are going to have to be done internally in those monitors, but they're still a pretty good deal for a 13-inch RGB monitor. You could get those for around that $100 mark if you get um, a good lucky day. Now, somebody did have to pay $250 for one, and I'm sure that was a very nice condition one, so that's probably a high end on what you'd expect to see, but those are another monitor you can look for and keep an eye out for uh, other than Sony's. And then another one that had just an unbelievable amount of sales data this month was JVC monitors. These are all CRTs again. The very first one is the H1950CG, which is the 19-inch version of that monitor that I have done a full um, – video series on the CG monitor there. That's only the 480i and 240p version. However, it's a beautiful tube. It's over 700 lines. So that's that's closer to what I'd say maybe like a 14M4 would be, or I'm sorry, a 20M4 would be closer to that 1950 CG. And so that one went for $470. And then you've got Quite a few nine-inch models that all sold. Some of those, these are these um, nine UAs, 
are pretty much composite only monitors. That's this one down here. I actually used to have one of these. They're nice and heavy duty, but they are just composite only. And then you've got some other nine inch monitors here and the prices range on those. Some of these can do some more and that's why they're getting up into these hundred dollar range. But there's also quite a few, you know, these ones um, were lower end JVC monitors, pretty much S video style, these 13 inches that were selling for around $80, $60. However, there's a lot of data here. I mean, it's like 12 more monitors that sold this month that were just JVCs. So now we can start getting into some of the higher end monitors again. These are um, getting back now. These are almost Sony's. These are the Olympus line of monitors, which Olympus's were actually just pretty much Sony PVMs, uh, 20 M2s and 14 M2s. They just got rebranded for Olympus, so Olympus could attach them to things like uh, different scopes and lab equipment, um, microscopes, um, different things like that in the lab environment. That's what you generally see uh, an Olympus monitor attached to. And again, they look exactly the same except for the branding on them. So we've got a couple of sales in November here. First one was $245, the middle one was $200, and then the last one was $227. So you're looking right at between $200 and $250 for that uh, monitor. And that's a great deal. It's slightly less than what you'd expect to pay for the 14M2, simply because people aren't searching for the Olympus as much, and they don't know that the Olympus is the same thing, exactly the same thing as a 14M2. Uh, just wanted to let you know that the November 19th purchase there for $200 was mine that I bought that you saw the unboxing for. So that was that sale. And like I said, there were a couple 203s that were sold, and these are generally 20 M2s. And most of the time, these monitors were made into the uh, 2000s, usually like mid-2000s, 2003, 4, 5. So they're, again, a really great quality monitor. Now, one of these was just got an incredible deal at $170, and even the one at $245 and $375, those are generally a lot lower than a working 20M2 will go for uh, because just people aren't looking as much for these Olympus monitors. So that's something that you can always keep an eye out for if you're really looking for a uh, nice 600 line uh, PVM style monitor that you might be able to get a slightly better deal on one of these Olympus monitors than just straight buying the Sony PVM version. And um, I'm going to jump now into some of the BVM sales. Now, there weren't a huge amount of BVM sales for the month, but these were, again, most of them. And the first, we've got a D9, which is just the little uh, nine-inch version of the multi-format D-series monitor. And uh, that one sold for $130, which is pretty typical. That one will sell for around $130, $150 on general. And then you've got a couple of 14-inch uh, H1U and an H5U. Now, the H1U, I've got it highlighted a little bit later in the video because it was just an, an, um, a wonderful shape monitor, very low hours, great big bundle of things that came with it. So I'll show you that later on in the video. And then you'll notice that D14 H5U, that one actually had probably a bad tube in it. It was listed with over 60,000 hours on it on the original tube. So uh, whoever bought that one most likely was going to have to replace the tube in it. And that's why it sold for a little bit less money than it should have really. Uh, if it would have had a good tube, it would have sold for a lot more than $363 most likely. And then we've got an A-series sale. Uh, A14F5U for $169, and you can uh, expect those A-series to be a lot lower. Uh, that was one that I bought again, that 169, and that one did not include any of the video input cards, but it was a full working good condition monitor with actually low uh, hours on it. So again, those D-series listings were quite unique, and there weren't a lot of BVM sales this month, but there were still some. I've got some other BVM sales I'm going to talk about, too, at the end of the video and the highlights. All right, so now we're getting into the PVMs, and, man, there were a ton of PVMs sold this month. First off, I counted a total of um, 91 PVMs that I recorded and did the sales figures for. Some of them were just sporadic one-time sales of really, really rare and off-branded monitors that, and I say rare, but they weren't monitors that you really want to use for anything 
They would either be some black and white or something really small and different. So I didn't include those couple. There was like two or three of those, but everything else is tallied into here. So first off, we've got a bunch of eight inch monitor sales. Okay, so the 82 20s and 21s, there were nine sales of those. They averaged about $75 a piece. And that's this monitor on the top with Grand Theft Auto on it. And that again is a composite only monitor. Uh, still a great little Trinitron tube, generally made in the early 90s. And again, just composite on there. The 8040 and 41 under that had five sales. That's $93, but that adds support for S video as well as an audio speaker on board. The 822, 8220, and 8221, they do not have a speaker either, but the 8040 and 41s, they have an onboard speaker. They support composite and S video. So $93 for those. Now you jump up again a little bit more and you get to the 8042 or 8044s, and those generally have cues after them. There were 15 sales of that, so a very popular monitor sale. Those are generally used as bench monitors for like testing and lab, uh, you know, labs or modders or anybody who's working on consoles and wants to get a video signal. Those are very good for testing. They sell for about $130. And then there is a 9L series, an L2 and an L3, and sometimes even an L1 that are in that nine inch or eight inch format, but they're just the nine L they're later PVMs. And there were four sales of that is our, were $131 on average each sale. So what I did was I added all the sales up on those and averaged them out for you. So you could get a kind of an idea of what a good price is on those. And again, all those were listed as pretty much working, but that's almost 30 total at 29 eight inch monitors, totally $3,600 in sales last month. So it's a pretty staggering number of just smaller PVMs that are being bought and moved. Now, there were a couple of 14 M2s and 14 M4Us that were sold. This is still a very popular monitor. And um, it's a good reason because it's one of the later built ones, it has a great service menu. It has the ability to have component and composite and uh, RGB and S video. And they have, a lot of times they'll even have some, well, not generally in the M4 and M2, they will not generally have a switchable second input. They will just have one input for RGB that you have to switch between RGB and component. But there were 14 or seven sales of the 14 M2s at 279 an average. Uh, so they were somewhere less than that, somewhere higher than that, obviously. But that was the overall average of those seven sales. And then if you're going to add another, you know, $75 about to get up to the 14 M4 U, which there were eight sales. So right on seven and eight, 15 sales total of that monitor. And the only difference on that M4 and the M2 is the M4 has the 800 lines of resolution and the 2 only has 600 lines. So you're just getting a little bit more resolution on the M4U than the M2U. But again, both very popular monitors, almost $4,800 in sales this month from just this uh, PVM line. Let's talk about some other 14 inch PVM sales. And these are all gonna be RGB monitors. So not something that doesn't include RGB. So we've got 1344Q and there were three sales of that. And I really bring this one up because this was pretty much the cheapest RGB um, monitor that is a PVM that we're selling uh, in good condition. And they were still reasonably cheap. They were all around the same amount of money. It wasn't as if one was really cheap. They were all around that $155 mark. Uh, so that's a great deal. Now, I will tell you that monitor does not have an onboard service menu. It's generally made in the extremely early 90s. There will be sometimes a speaker on them, but that speaker will only support or go through uh, composite and S-video. It won't work on the RGB line. And then that RGB line generally is not switchable to component as it is later on down the line. So again, it's a very early uh, RGB monitor. However, it still uses a 600 line resolution Trinitron tube in it. So it's still a really good picture if you get it adjusted correctly. It's just generally, it's an older monitor and not one that people are generally looking for. And 1351Q is different. It does add a service menu in that one. So those ones are a little bit more valuable. It does have a lower line count on the picture, but um, still with that newer monitor, it will be a little bit more money. So that was 
dollar average. We had a 1353 MD, which again is a great monitor. It's got the switchable inputs for component and RGB, and that one sold for 255, 1354Q. That one is a very popular monitor still, just like the 14M2. It's pretty much the predecessor to the 14M2, sold for 270. So slightly lesser than the 14M2, but it could pretty much be compared to those other sales up there. And the 14L2 is a little bit the same as the 14M2, only it's the L series, which means it's a little bit newer. It's the newest of the PVMs uh, that were available would be the L series. And that one sold for a little bit more, of course, because it's newer at $400 each sale. Now, there were a bunch of PVMs that were 14 inches that were sold that only have S video. And that's like your N series, like N5, N1. And then um, the L series also has an L1 that only does. RGB or no, does not do RGB or component. It leaves that off and only does uh, composite and S video. Now these can be used as replacement tubes. So they are very good at, you know, if you need a tube in your 14 inch PVM and it's busted, you can generally use a tube from one of these as a replacement tube. But nine sales averaging $130 almost each. So the lot of a lot of these monitors are still selling, and if you run into them, they are still worth a little bit of money, not as much as an RGB version, uh, but they can be modded for RGB, so a lot of people are still buying and trading this in an L-Series S-Video monitor. I want to go through and show you now some 20-inch sales really quickly. Uh, again, this is a very popular monitor, not a huge amount of sales on this one this month, but still quite a few. We've got the 20 M2s and M4Us. So same thing as a 14 inch, you know, M4 and M2, except it's a 20 inch screen or actually a 19 inch screen, but labeled as a 20 inch screen. And the uh, prices are pretty much similar in there for the, you know, I mean, look at the 20 M2 though. You've got a pretty big difference there between one being 450 and 625. So that's a lot to do with condition and how um, much you want to get the monitor at the time, whether you're going to end up paying more or not. And then if you look at the M4U, that's something that you could definitely shop for and probably save some more money. Um, again, that's going to depend on the condition of the monitor, but the prices fluctuate a lot in there from $500 to $700. So you still might end up paying $500 or at least $500 for one, but it's better than paying the $700 for the similar monitor if you get stuck into a bidding war or if you come on to eBay when there's only one 20M4U listed, you could use generally wait for that monitor to have a couple more show up and they show up at a better price sometimes, but just that's one to keep an eye out, both of those, because the prices will fluctuate on those 20 inches. Other Sony PVM sales of note. First, we have 2030s. There's a couple sales of 2030s. They're right at $530 a piece shipped. Well, $531. Still a great monitor that's commanding a little bit more value than uh, it used to in years past. Then we got the 2530, which actually just recently sold, and that one sold for 950. That's pretty high price for that one. And then 2950 sold for 750. So that's a pretty good price for a working 2950 if they were able to get it uh, shipped safely to them. And there were 14 L5 sold this month. And honestly, if you're looking for an L5, a 14 L5, there were quite a few of them going for really good deals right now. I'm not really sure why. Maybe there's not as many people looking for that monitor. But $400 average for a 14 L5 is a pretty darn good price considering that's a multi-format monitor and generally should be in the $600 to $700 range if it's in really good condition. There was one 20L5 that was sold recently, and that one was sold for $1,368, $1,368. So that was a good condition 20L5, or at least listed as one. And again, $1,368 delivered. So still a grail monitor for people that um, are looking for these and commanding, of course, over $1,200, which is what I'm pretty much expecting at this point in 2019. I'm going to go through now and talk about some of these highlighted sales uh, for the month. Now, the first one here, you might recognize, most, most of you will, this was the 1353MD that did sell. 
as an auction from Retrotech, but you have to remember this one was completely restored. There really wasn't any other PVM listed all month that sold that was as restored as this one. So it is a really unique outlier, and that's why it was a lot more than the other ones, but still um, overall a good deal because if, for example, if I went and bought one of these decent condition monitors for two to $300, uh, all the services that I did on this monitor time and uh, parts and things like that would have added up to well over $300 in extra labor costs and, and expenses put into a monitor like this. So uh, that's one thing that, you know, that makes it a little bit better deal is it's just rare. Nobody really does what I'm doing right now with these. Not many. There are a couple, and we do have one more restoration, and we're going to go through that next. Um, not first. First off, we'll go through this. This was the BVM D-Series sale that was the 14H1U. I wanted to go through this one real quickly because it was just such a great uh, bundle deal. You could see everything that it came with. Again, only had less than 3,000 hours on the tube, which is just a fantastic. I mean, it's practically new. It came with the 129X card. So if you just consider the accessories of the tube, the 129X card, and even the bezel and the uh, box and the out or external control remote, all those things pieced individually would have probably cost the not the same more than what this monitor wound up going for. So whoever got this one really did get a great deal at um, even at six hundred forty three, almost six hundred fifty dollars. It's a fantastic deal for a multi format monitor. Uh, with such practically new and in a flight case with every accessory you need to get going and using it right away. So that was another one I wanted to highlight. And then this was the last one I wanted to highlight. I talked about there being one other uh, monitor that was listed this month that was restored. And that was this one, which is a BVM 20F1U. It sold for $1,900 almost. And it was restored by Save on Pat. So uh, you can understand, again, why these certain monitors that are restored by a couple of individuals who have experience with these, they're going for more money, and that's why they are the outliers of the group because they'll pretty much be good forever. I can imagine that whoever got this monitor is very pleased with it and will be able to use this for, you know, as long as they want because, again, we all know that Save on Pat knows how to adjust these things anyway that they need to be adjusted. But that was the pretty much highlighted monitor sale this month. The, just a gigantic uh, sale, almost $2,000. Now, there were some monitors that were sold as repair monitors, and that's where we're going to finish up tonight. These were four different monitors. There's actually an Ikigami that was sold on December 2nd for only $110 listed as parts. A 14M4U that was sold on December 14th for $228 that was listed as parts. Now the 20L5, I read it, it did turn on, but the uh, tube had a lot of scratches on it. So, you know, that might've been a good deal because somebody could get in there and that one's got an anti-glare layer on it, that tube. So you might just be able to pull the anti-glare layer off and get a 20L5 for $500 and not have to do anything else to it. So that was actually a really good deal, whoever got that most likely. And then there was a 1351Q, which was sold for $120, but it wasn't working too. So you can expect, you know, that's pretty much scrap monitor parts sale for $120. But that's pretty much it. That's all the sales, the data that I have for this month. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Please uh, let me know what you think. Did you guys buy any of these monitors or did you happen to buy monitors somewhere else? Uh, please leave your sale information in the comments if you'd like to, so we can add it to the uh, records because I am going and I'm keeping a record of these sales numbers so we can track this every month with Market Watch. And again, thank you guys, everybody, for watching this with me today. And I'll see you all next time with some more retro content.